This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss the solutions, relevant concepts, and scoring guidelines associated with some of the parts of our 2020 mock AP Calculus exam, Form AB, Question 2. My name is Steve Kokoska. I'm a recently retired professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania and I'm a former AP Calculus Chief Reader. Form AB Question 2 involves a particle moving along the y-axis. Its position is modeled by a twice differentiable function y of t, where t is measured in seconds and y of t is measured in meters. We're given a table of values of y prime of t for selected values of t. And we also know that the position of the particle at time t equal 12 is minus 3. In part a, we need to use a locally linear approximation of y at t equal 12 to find an approximation for y of 11.8. In order to solve this problem, the student needs to understand and use the concept of local linearity. Let's suppose that the function f is differentiable at the point a, f of a. Then the graph of f is smooth there, and it has a tangent line at this point. There is no sharp corner or cusp in the graph of f at that point. And another way to think about this is that the graph of f does not change direction sharply or abruptly there. Geometrically, if f is differentiable at a, and we zoom in near the point a f of a, then the graph of y equal f of x straightens out, and it looks more and more like a straight line near the point a f of a. This geometric property is called local linearity. Let's try to use technology to visualize this property geometrically. Consider the function f, defined here. It's a third degree polynomial. Since f is a polynomial, it's differentiable everywhere. These figures show the graph of f as we zoom in near the point 328. Here's the graph of f in the viewing window minus 6 to 6 by minus 45 to 40. This graph exhibits the characteristics we expect of a third degree polynomial but it really doesn't look linear near the point 328. Let's start to zoom in near this point 328. Here's the viewing window 0, 05 by 2030. The graph here is beginning to look a little more linear near the point 328. As we continue to zoom in, the graph of f looks more and more like a straight line. In fact, it looks more and more like the graph of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equal 3. And this observation is the basis for a method of finding approximate values of functions. Let's try to formalize this visualization. Suppose the function f is a differentiable function at x equal a, and the value f of a is known. Let capital L be the linear function whose graph is the tangent line to the graph of f at the point a f of a. And here's a figure that shows the graph of y equal f of x and y equal l of x. It seems very reasonable, and the graph suggests, that we can use the line tangent to the graph of f at a f of a as an approximation to the graph of y equal f of x when x is near a. Here is an equation of the tangent line. And as an aside, notice that I wrote this a little differently than what you might see in the scoring guidelines. But I think this expression provides a nice connection to Taylor series. So this expression is the linear approximation, or the tangent line approximation. And the linearization is the function whose graph is the tangent line. So this is the linearization of f at a. So just a couple of more comments about this concept 
before we solve this problem. This idea is frequently tested on the AP Calculus exam. The accuracy of the tangent line approximation depends on three factors. And although I won't illustrate these here, you can visualize these results geometrically. First, the accuracy of the approximation depends on how far away x is from a. The tangent line is a pretty good approximation to the graph of f near a, but as we move farther away, the graph of f might exhibit all sorts of nonlinear characteristics, twists and turns, and the tangent line would therefore not provide a good approximation. The accuracy of the approximation also depends on the steepness of the graph of f near a. If the graph of f is very steep near x equal a, if we move just a little away from a, then the tangent line will not provide a good approximation. And finally, the accuracy also depends on the concavity of the graph of f near x equal a. If the graph of f is concave up near a, then the tangent line is below the graph of f and the tangent line approximation will be an underestimate. And similarly, if the graph of f is concave down near a, then the tangent line is above the graph of f, and a tangent line approximation near x equal a will be an overestimate. So finally, let's put all this information together to solve this problem. We're given that y of 12 is equal to minus 3, and from the table, we have that y prime of 12 is equal to minus 5. Using the concepts just presented, an equation of the tangent line is minus 3 minus 5 times the quantity x minus 12. So, to find the approximation, let x equal 11.8 in this equation. And after a little simplification, we're left with y of 11.8 is approximately minus 2. Here are the scoring guidelines for this problem. Part A is worth 2 points, 1 point for the tangent line equation, and 1 point for the approximation. Here are some interpretations of these guidelines to help award points and to prepare for problems like this on the next AP Calculus exam. The first point is for a correct tangent line equation. Notice that the problem does not ask for this equation, so theoretically the student does not have to present one. But it seems that this is the logical way to start the problem. And remember, the scoring guidelines are used for awarding partial credit. There is no explanation or additional supporting work necessary here the student could simply present a tangent line equation. However, if the student makes an error in rewriting their tangent line equation, that is, putting it in a different form, then they do not earn the second point. And it's okay if the student uses x as the independent variable, not t as in the table. And even if the student writes y of x is equal to their correct tangent line equation, will still award the tangent line equation point. To earn the second point, the student does not need to use the approximation symbol. An equal sign is OK here. And the student does not need to present a tangent line equation. However, we do need sufficient evidence and justification for their approximation. So with that in mind, here's an example that earns both points we can see that the student has used the tangent line equation and the approximation is correct. And remember, the final numerical answer does not need to be simplified. So even if the student left off the minus 2 here, they would still earn both points. In part b, we need to approximate y double prime of 4 by using the average rate of change of y prime of t on the interval 2 to 6. Now, this is a pretty straightforward question, but I think it requires one very important concept. 
Suppose f is differentiable at x equals c. Although we don't often stress this in an AP calculus class, the slope of any secant line close to x equals c can be used as an approximation to the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. And of course, as we choose points closer and closer to x equals c, the approximation gets better and better. Here's a graph to illustrate this general idea. Suppose I consider two points on the graph of f near the point where x equals c. The slope of this secant line, also the average rate of change of f over the interval a to b, is close to the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. This problem specifies that we use the average rate of change over the interval 2 to 6. So to approximate y double prime of 4, we find the average rate of change, or the slope of the secant line, over that interval. And the approximation is minus 2.5. Note again that this problem specified the interval. We could have used an interval, say 0 to 6, or even 0 to 10. But it seems reasonable that the closer we are to x equal 4, the better the approximation will be. The scoring guidelines are pretty simple here. One point for the correct approximation. And here are a few interpretations of these scoring guidelines. We need to see a difference quotient here for the student to earn the point. And that means we need to see both a difference and a quotient. So the fraction, for example, minus 10 divided by 4, does not earn this point. And a bald minus 2.5 does not earn the point. The student must also use the values from the table in order to earn the point. In other words, they cannot leave their answer like this. They must read and use the values of y prime from the table. I hope this video gives you a good idea of how to solve these problems using the necessary AP calculus concepts and a reasonable expectation of how they would be scored. We'll look at more parts of this free response question in the next video.